Good afternoon, everybody. It's David Schlothauer here with another detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion for Thursday, June the 13th, 2024. So in today's discussion, we're going to be monitoring the Gulf of Mexico as we have an area to watch from the National Hurricane Center that is now a 40% chance of tropical development. So with that being said, here's a look at the latest GOES-16 True Color Visible Satellite Imagery provided by Dr. Levi Cowan at TropicalTidbits.com. And as we can see here, we are really going to be talking a lot of detail on that area of interest in the southern Gulf of Mexico. That's really getting everybody's attention, and we're not going to spend hardly any time on Invest 90L since that is moving over the open waters. This area down here, folks, has a medium chance of tropical formation as we speak. But other than that, the crickets are chirping out in the main development region because the Atlantic is looking pretty quiet in this region as a lot of Saharan dust keeps on coming off of Africa, keeping this area of the tropics in check. So when we take a look at the latest seven-day graphical tropical weather outlook from the National Hurricane Center, there is that area of interest that they are watching very closely. There's a 40% chance for this to develop into a tropical depression or a tropical storm, which would be Alberto on our list of names to start the Atlantic hurricane season. Well, we're already in it, but you get the idea be our first name storm of the season. And then, of course, we're not going to talk a whole lot on Invest 90L since this is going to remain away from land and it's going to remain over the open Atlantic water. But on the other hand, we're also watching another area of interest over the eastern Pacific, just southwest of the southern Mexico portion into Central America, where we do have an area of interest. This also has a low chance of tropical formation, so there's not a lot of agreement on the modeling that this is going to become anything significant. But it will deliver quite a bit of rain and flood concerns nevertheless. Now, speaking of rainfall on the GFS model, looking pretty significant out there across Central America. Even for portions of Costa Rica, we could be seeing some significant rainfall over the next 10 to even 15 days as this intertropical convergence zone remains fairly active and that coupled with the Central American gyre can make things a bit too interesting. So here's a look at the GFS model with the precipitation. Green colors indicate light to moderate rainfall, whereas your yellows, reds, and magenta colors indicate more heavier rainfall. So taking this forward, this is for a Thursday afternoon into the evening hours. Really not a lot going on other than a lot of rainfall in Central America. And then things really get uh, going once we go into the next three days. This is for the weekend. Yes, quite a bit of rainfall and some thunderstorms. We get that southwesterly flow get some of the orographic effects from that flow, they're going to get a lot of rainfall, a lot of flood problems, mudslides, debris flows, because we have some wildfires burning over here over the last month or so. So keep that in mind. And then things continue to escalate as we go into early next week. So this is for Monday morning, June the 17th. And look at that Central American gyre. I don't think you can get any more classic than this. You get a lot of your moisture really concentrating over here, over portions of Mexico, uh, the Yucatan Peninsula, Belize, Honduras. Uh, I mean, it's not good. I'm telling you right now, lots of rain and flood concerns. Big monsoon gyre really turning up a storm by the time we go into the middle of next week. June the 19th, by the way, Juneteenth could be very interesting for folks that live here in Mexico with all that rain and it doesn't end. It doesn't end. We're looking at the next 180 hours out. So we're looking at the first day of summer and wow, summer storms, summer flooding and summer tropics really going to add all this all up. And then we might have to watch something else that could pop up on the other side of that monsoon gyre by the time we go into Saturday, June the 22nd. Rainfall totals look awfully concerning in this portion of the world, especially again for Central America, as well as the southern portion of the Gulf of Mexico. We could be measuring rain in inches and feet, of course. We're looking at several inches to a couple of feet of rainfall down here near Tawanapak to the southeast there. Wow. Lots and lots and lots of moisture really going to be um, amplified here. 
because of that southwesterly flow, that monsoon, that orographic forcing uh, along, uh, along the mountain chain here. Really going to get things going. And then, of course, over the western Gulf of Mexico, you're looking at 6 to maybe 10 inches of rainfall versus much drier conditions, of course, in Florida, where you might be only looking at about a half an inch to maybe an inch and a half of water versus southern Florida. You're still expecting between 2 to maybe 4 inches of more additional rainfall. But boy, it's down here in Central America, that Central American gyre, going to be hard at work at producing copious amounts of rainfall. And why, you might ask? Well, when we take a look at the deep layer moisture plot from TropicalTidbits.com, brown shading indicates drier air in the deep layers of the atmosphere versus the teal colors, the blue colors. You'll see this in future tropical weather outlook and discussions on this YouTube channel. When we track hurricanes or tropical storms, you'll see this very often. So make sure you're aware of what we're looking at here. And so the teal colors, lots of moisture, browns, drier air. And then when we go forward in time, no wonder why this area is going to see a lot of rain down here. Look at darkest teal colors indicate 100% or nearly full saturation of the air in the deep layers of the atmosphere. All that moisture has got to get ringed out somehow and it has to go somewhere. So the upward motion is going to really squeeze out that moisture and thunderstorm rains and then look what we might get later on. So that moisture might resurge northward towards the end of the forecast period. By the way, this is June 24th. This is really far out in time. And I know you all are saying, oh, David, tropical storm. Oh my gosh, we got a tropical storm, David. This is going to be our next named storm. Very far out. And I would highly discourage or I would highly recommend not looking at anything beyond seven days out. That's why the National Hurricane Center does not go out to 10 days in their graphical outlooks nor two weeks. We're only looking at the next seven days. So here's a look at the GFS wind shear forecast. Wind shear is not the wind direction, but it's a change in wind direction with height. So redder colors here illustrate stronger shear, bluer and greener colors illustrate lighter wind shear or very little in the way of shear at all. And tropical cyclones like very little wind shear because the vortex is able to stack on top of one another. And that's how you get these systems to rapidly organize and intensify at an explosive rate. We have a lot of wind shear things don't go very well because all that heat energy, all of that latent heat release gets blown to one side of the system and things don't work out in that favor very well for cyclones. So when we go forward in time here on the GFS, we can see our shear uh, with the Central American gyre is down in here. So the shear looks to be fairly light, but look at around that very hostile conditions over the Gulf of Mexico, that wind shear greater than 50 knots, perhaps almost 80 knots. So nothing survives that very well. And over the next, say, week or so, going to be tricky to get anything to develop down here in the, uh, in the Caribbean or the Gulf of Mexico. Even so, we get that some of these vort maxes trying to rotate around that. This wind shear will not allow that to happen at all. And with some dry air and entrainment, yeah, I just don't see much going on. Maybe down the road, we might have to keep an eye on the tropics towards the, ver uh, towards the end of June, the last week or two. We might have to keep an eye on it. So with that being said, let's take a look at our ensemble forecast here from the ECMWF. This is... Basically, all 50 members put into one forecast and making an ensemble, an average. And some of the members from the European do indicate that this could become a tropical depression or tropical storm in the next, say, five to seven days or so. Even one little member here indicating a stronger end tropical storm. What about that? It's a 994 system on its track as it goes across the northern Yucatan Peninsula. Let's take a look at further down the road. You can see more of these members do illustrate lots of darker blues and greens. So there is certainly some tropical development potential with this. We get our first named storm in the southern Gulf of Mexico, and this is climatology. This is a active period in this portion of the Atlantic because climatology and you get that Central American gyre, you get things that spin up little vortmaxes, and if those concentrate, we get a tropical system. 
So the GEFS, the Global Ensemble Forecasting System, which is the American mode of the GFS Ensemble, we can see also a big cluster of outcomes, lots of members here indicating a low-end or a mid-grade tropical storm or a depression. And if we go for, further out in time, again, some strengthening is possible here by the time we go into the next seven days. And that is exactly why the National Hurricane Center does have that out. So now when we take a look at another product, this is the ECMWF Ensemble Probability of Tropical Storm Chances. This has been lowered actually, quite frankly, on the European model, but still indicates that there's a 30 to 40% chance for a tropical depression or storm to exist in this portion of the Gulf of Mexico. Now, with that being said, please be safe, folks. I can only do my job at relaying the information that I do present you all based on my research and analysis. So your job is to also share this with their family and friends on social media. I really hope this video helped you out a lot. If it did, please, please consider subscribing. If you haven't already, hit the like button and share this video with your family and friends on social media and also leave a comment in the section below. As always, thank you for tuning in to today's episode 16 on the tropics, especially in the Gulf of Mexico as we are watching that area of interest. But I'll be back with you more tomorrow with another episode on the tropics.